बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हमारे प्राचार्य महोदय का जिन्होंने हमारे बच्चों को मोटिवेट किया हमारे जो भी एम पीज है जो भी मिनिस्टर है जो भी मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट है उन सभी को बहुत बहुत हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं हमारी तरफ से मैं अब थे सर को इनवाइट करता हूँ वो यूथ पार्लियामेंट की प्रोसेस को स्टार्ट करवाए मीना सर कैमरा ऑन है ना यस एक 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 कॉल तो आया था नो प्रॉब्लम मत उठाओ कॉल किसी को थैंक यू सर A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to the 33rd National Youth Parliament session, and I hope this session will be fruitful. We begin today's session with oath of affirmation of our newly elected members. Secretary General, please.
respected speaker, I extend myself and my party members with a sorrow that the nation is failing on the sudden demise of our former union president, APJ Abdul Kalam, who died aged 83, was a former Packer boy who became a national hero in India. As the architect of the country's nuclear missile program, in 2002, he was overwhelmingly elected India's 11th president, becoming the third Muslim to hold the post. His election by nearly 90% of the national and state legislatures completed an astonishing journey for the son of a poor boyman from South India, whose sister was said to have found her wedding jewelry to pay for his education. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, his achievements are the torch bearer for the country, especially the young generation of this nation. I extend my heartfelt condolence to the Brigade family. Respected Speaker, I associate myself and my party members with the sad Feel the void that the nation feels at the sad demise of Dr. A.P.J. Kalam. He was an extraordinary scientist. He played a crucial role in India's most successful programs. After his retirement from presidentship, Mr. Kalam remains a cosmic figure by accepting invitations from all over India to speak, particularly to students and children. Throughout his time in office, he had shout to make the presidency relevant to young people and afterward spoke of himself as a teacher. In him, we have lost a true children, a true retina and a great countryman. I extend my condolences to the brief family. The house may stand in silence for a while to express a deep sorrow. Secretary General may please convey the masses of condolence to the Viral family. Prime Minister to introduce new ministers. Honorable Speaker Man, I have pleasure in introducing to you and through you to the house, my colleagues, the new ministers. Shri Mati Sneha Hocker, Honorable Minister of Agriculture. Shrimati Lady Pudrakam, Honorable Minister of Law and Justice. Shrimati K. L. Piyayu, Honorable Minister of Health and Welfare Education. And now we begin with a question hour. Question number 101, Honorable Member, Leader of Opposition. Mr. Hamidun. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, through you I would like to put a question to the Honorable Minister for Railway. Ma'am, will the Honorable Minister of Railway be pleased to state the arrangement made by the government based regarding basic enmities in the railways for the people of the country? Honorable Minister of Railway, please. Speaker, ma'am, our government is highly concerned regarding this matter. In this regard, 200 railway stations are brought under the other station scheme and are provided basic amenities like toilets, drinking water, catering services, waiting rooms, etc. 650 stations will be receiving new toilets, 17,000 old toilets in trains will be replaced by bio toilets increasing the number by 17,388. Under the Swatch Rail Swatch Bharat program, 
professional cleaning agencies are hired to keep the trains and stations clean. Mr. Hamilton. Madam Speaker, I would like to put in two more questions to the Honourable Minister. Ma'am, security. Security is a major issue in the railways. Ma'am, I would like to know from the Honourable Minister that what the government is doing on the safety, especially safety for the women in train, and ma'am, a black marketing. Ma'am, black marketing of railway reserve tickets are the various, are the most uh, serious matter. Ma'am, I would like to also know that what the government is doing to stop this. Honorable Minister. Honorable Speaker, our government is highly concerned in this regard and has started uh, the initiative called the YTSA, Yatri Ticket Suvidha Kendra, to curb the black marketing of railway tickets. Our government has also provided security helpline numbers 182 and 138. Hello, 138. Security numbers 182 and 138. 400 railway stations are also provided CCTV services. There are also pink zones in trains that is compartment reserved only for women to increase the security services, especially security of women in trains.
a government embarked on with one year of coming to power, which unfortunately does not go down with the position. Respected Chair, we've already announced phase two of the program, and sleep of veterans have already been taken, like network of 1,25,857 branches of scheduled commercial banks as on 1st March 2022, out of which 48,857, that is 38.58%, are in rural areas. 1,84,597 ATMs of scheduled commercial banks as of 30th May 2022, out of which 9,2100 are on eight on site ATMs. In the year 2021 and 2022, branches and 21,197 ATMs were added. 1,26,062 26,062 bank metras deployed as on 8 August 2022. And limit for gas withdrawal at POS has been enhanced from 1 lakh to 2 lakh per day in third tier to sixth tier centers. One of the basic objectives of financial inclusion is the delivery of financial resources. Cost to the vast sections of the disadvantaged income groups. To achieve this objective, banks of Minister Gen Prime Minister Jandhan Yojana accounts and basic saving Yojana deposit accounts. The network of bank branches, ATMs, bank trust equipped with micro ATMs, availability an enhancement of limit of cash withdrawal at POS will help the customers in meeting their cash withdrawal facility and an approachable distance. Thank you. Sri Mati Tanushri, please. Oh, honorable speaking up. I would like to state that the finance minister is always busy making big promises and I hope, I hope, this time she stands up to her words. Now, Will she kindly let us know what provisions the government has for a vast number of people who are yet to be brought under PMJDY and Aadhaar? Honorable Minister, please. Honorable, Honorable Speaker, Aadhaar is not mandatory for this facility. In this regard, Indian Bank Association has then ask to ensure revised guidelines to all banks. Overdraft facility has been availed by 1,64,962 account holders as on 1st March, August, 1st August 2022. Thank you. Question number 104. Honorable Member Srimati Shurvala. Honorable Speaker Sahiba, 
I would like to inform my honorable opposition that the government is committed to accord the priority to water security. Ma'am, we have conceived the country's fishes in trying Yojana in order to extend the coverage of irrigation in a focused, in a focused and comprehensive manner. Ma'am, you have to ready but ask the Khamdeh Kya Kya. Iske ilawa aap 2014 or Punjab ki budget speech ko thakke dekh liji. Usme humne 1000 crore rupay zirat se wabasta mukt kalin subo ki tarakki ki liye sarf kiya. Shayad humare memran sahiba ko suburo se zada star dust ka shok rakhi hai. Isi liye unhe is cheez ka ilam nahi ki humare mukh me kya kya hoi raha hai. Dhanyawad. Question number 105, Honorable Member, Mr. Stady. Honorable Speaker, Ma'am, to you, I would like to ask this question to the Educational Minister. Students in India often face problems and confusion while selecting their options. What are varying ratings given by different international rating agencies? Where are our universities hardly figured it out to Don't you think? It's time when we should move towards India's specific rating from higher education institutions. Honorable Minister of Education, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, our ministry is busy in preparing a framework to rank India's higher education institutions. This India centric framework will give an alternative to Indian students. The Ministry had even held consultations, I repeat, the Ministry had even held consultations with U.S. and Times ranking authorities to look at how to improve the rankings. The each academic institutes will be assessed on parameters like teaching, learning, research, collaborative practice, and professional perception, graduate outcomes, placements, outreach, and inclusive action, and peer group perception. One of the important parameters is outreach and inclusive action. This will assist the academic institutes to work on affirmative action and steps taken up to increase and improve the rankings. Thank you. Question number 106. Honorable Member, Mr. Tenishan, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am. To you, I would like to ask a question for the finance minister. Will the finance minister be pleased to step? How the citizens of a country are going to look at LIC, IPO, and DPCL privatization? Given that the target for the privatization is to 70,000 crore, and the next year's estimate that 6,500 crore have already been spent, why the budget did not speak about inflation? Honorable Minister of Finance, please. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, firstly, we have shown the intent of the government. We are progressing in many of these fields, and I think we've been quite realistic in telling what we'll do and we'll achieve what we have told. Every budget does not speak about inflation and its impact. But of course, talking about numbers, money, credibility, liquidity, and also supply and demand of essential goods and other commodities, you keep in mind inflation. I understand that inflation in the price of essential commodities has a huge impact on people. I am not discarding it, but when the price of edible seeds and oil rose, we proactively decreased the duty on it twice to increase the import of palm oil. Thank you. Question number 107. Honorable Member, Srimati Galina, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, to you, I would like to ask a, ask a question to the Home Minister. 
to the Minister of Home Affairs, be pleased to state whether there has been an increase in the incidence of custodial violence in the country, and if so, what are the steps being taken by the government in this regard? Honorable Minister of Home and Affairs, please. Honorable Speaker, Man, the National Human Rights Commission do receive complaints regarding human rights violations, including custodial violence. The, as per the data maintained by the NHRC, no visible signs of increase in the incidents are made out on the basis of complaints received by the NHRC. Police and public orders are state subjects as per the seventh schedule of the Constitution of India. Um, however, the central government supplements the <coughs> of the state government, union territory administration by issuing various advisories from time to time and by providing them financial assistance for modernization of police forces and through training programs for police personnel. The NHRC also issues guidelines and advisories from time to time and conduct workshops and seminars, etc. Whereby the Commission endeavors to sanitize public servants for better protection of human rights. Thank you. Question number 108. Honorable Mandel, Nick Hill, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, I would like to ask these questions to the Honorable Health Minister. Will the Health Minister be pleased to state, number A, the importance of testing for asymptomatic citizens in the light of the increase in COVID cases in India? Number B, a detailed update on any complications with children who have recovered from the coronavirus. Thank you. Honorable Minister of Health, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, coronavirus tests are now given to everyone with no need for a referral from a doctor and they are for free. Using the test, it's possible to detect even if the person who shows no sim symptoms are sick. The more people that are tested, the easier it will be fine to more and more people who are sick despite not showing any symptoms. As for the detailed updates, according, a according to a report by the Coronavirus Information Center, there have been multiple reports of children who have been infected and have later developed various complications after recovery. The most common of this is an inflammatory syndrome that hits multiple systems in the body. It is also characterized by fever and various organ failures, which can appear life-threatening in themselves. The syndrome appears for about two to four weeks after the person is infected with the coronavirus. And is most common among healthy children aged 5 to 14 years. Levels of severity can range from just a fever to requiring hospitalization. This syndrome can affect the lungs, nervous system, and digestive system and result in inflamed meninges and various pancreas issues. There are also several reports of other complications such as diabetes, exhaustion, difficulty in breathing, and neurological syndromes, which are similar to many adults who have recovered. Thank you. Question number 109. Honorable Member, Leader of Opposition, Mr. Hamilton, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, it's a very important question. Ma'am, my question is to the Defense Minister. Now, will the Defence Minister be pleased to state that whether the country is going to be benefited from the Antipat scheme, and if so, how the country is to be benefited from it? Honourable Minister of Defence, please. Honourable Speaker, ma'am. Yes. Yes, under the Omnibus scheme, India has with an opportunity to serve in the Indian Armed Forces. This is a transformative initiative 
to provide a useful profile to the armed forces in the country. In part two, we widely benefit the youth of the country, those between the age of 17.5 years and 21 years. We will be inducted into the Indian Army, the Navy, the Air Force. Our givers will be paid a salary between Our givers will be paid a salary between rupees thirty uh, thousand to forty thousand per month. They will also get an insurance cover of forty eight lakh of during the period. On exciting the services, our givers will be given rupees eleven point seven one lakhs as seven eighty package. Which will be exempted from the income tax. However, there will be no uh, pensionary benefits. The, well, the educational qualification of those applying for the Agnibat scheme will be the same as the criteria for an appointment in the force. As per the criteria, The Indian Armed Forces will try to give a 12 class certificate to the 9 class student who joins as an Alnivir. And lastly, on the completion of 4 years of service, about 25% of Alnivirs will be enrolled in the Armed Forces as a regular cadres for a medium period of 15 years. Remaining Alnivirs will get assistance from the Armed Forces for further employment availability. Thank you. Question number one, grade 10. Honorable member, Srimati Mallory, please. Participation in the Indian Railways will only be 5%. 95% of the trains will be still run by the Indian Railways. Question number 111. Honorable Member, Srimati Anushya, please. से 
होगा महसूस ही करेगी क्योंकि हमारी सरकार हर तरह से प्रयासरत है कि कोई भी भ्रष्टाचार इस देश में जाल न फैला सके जिसके जिसको जितना जरूरत हो उसको उतना ही फायदा उपलब्ध कराया जाए और आपकी सरकार तो जरूरत से ज्यादा फायदा देने में मशहूर है अंत में मैं यह स्पष्ट कर दूं कि हमारी सरकार ने दैनिक जीवन में प्रयोग आने वाले वस्तुओं और सब्जियों का मूल्य अत्यधिक कम करने के लिए जो कदम उठाए हैं वह इस प्रकार है भारत में किसानों को अधिक मात्रा में शिक्षित करने की प्रक्रिया जारी है मुफ्त खाद और यूरिया अधिक मात्रा में समस्त किसान समस्त किसानों को उपलब्ध कराया है बेहतरीन डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी का प्रयोग करके फसलों की जांच प्रति महीने की जाती है भारत की जनसंख्या और दैनिक जरूरतों को ध्यान में रखते हुए उनमें संतुलता बनाए रखने के लिए फसलों और सब्जियों को पैदावार पहले से कई अधिक बढ़ रहा है धन्यवाद Question number one in Red Bell, Honorable Member Srimati Sajal, please. Of the benefits of the FDI to our people, 
FDI to India in our first tenure amounted to $193 billion, which is 50% more than the preceding years. This FDI has led to job creation and expansion in both services and labor sector, thus improving the life of the middle class and the lower middle class significantly. And last but not the least, our Honourable Prime Minister's frequent foreign tours has bolstered India's global image as an investment destination and a rising global power, which is extremely crucial for our national interest. Thank you, Speaker Man. Question number 114. Honourable Member Srimati Komal, please. to our country that the honourable members, honourable ministers and the judiciary branches are misusing their uh, 
uh, possessions in different ways. Madam Speaker, recently I heard from some resources that ministers, some ministers of this government are taking bribes from people to make their works done. So ma'am, it's a very shameful for this government that some reporters also have reported that this ministers in the government are taking bribes. So ma'am, I would like to I would like to answer from the government that how how the government is going to do like this to develop the country ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Hamalu, have you given knowledge of it earlier? Yes, ma'am. I have given it uh, before the, yesterday 10 a.m. It will be examined and you will come to know about it. Message from Upper Chamber. Secretary General to uphold message from Upper Chamber of the Parliament. The bill for regulation of sports body 2015, which the government passed in last session, has been ratified and is ready to be sent for president approval. Thank you. has 
be made in the interest of farmers right, right from compensation provisions to, uh, to relief and repopulation to returning unutilized rain land after a certain are uh, after a certain period are all in the interest of the motion over a nation overall. History shall stay witness to this progress this act shall bring to our nation in this era of competitive uh, competitive federalism. I wish the opposition rises above its petty political gimmicks that risk the life of our poor farmers and try to understand the importance of this reform in later in spirit instead of opposing it for the sake of oppo opposing it. Thank you. No conference motion. Leader of the opposition party, Mr. Alman, please. On the speaker party. इस सरकार ने आज तक वो भी काम ढंग से नहीं किया ये सरकार महज सिर्फ कुर्सी पर कुर्सी पर सत्ता पर आने के लिए ये बड़े बड़े बातें करती है ये सरकार लोगों की दुख दर्द परेशानी को देखते हुए और द स्पीकर इस सरकार ने न एजुकेशन पे न हेल्थ सेक्टर पे न डिफेंस पे और न एग्रीकल्चर पे आज तक कोई काम नहीं किया। So madam, we demand a motion of no confidence to be granted. Motion moved. Those who are in favor of the government, please say A. And those who are against it, please say no. A. We have a ratio of 51 is to 49, and I think the A's have it. The A's have it. The A's have it. Now, please, the Prime Minister. Madam Shukra Guzar, who has been party members, and who has been a party member, 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 मैं गुजारिश करती हूँ अपने ओपोजिशन मेंबरें से वो हर एक मुद्दे को पॉलिटिसाइज ना करें। Let's not paint every issue with the brush of politics. This will be not good for our country. मैं गुजारिश करती हूँ, दरख्वास करती हूँ अपने मुल्क के लोगों से कि वो जग जाए, जिम्मेदार हो जाए। जिम्मेदार होते हैं तो कौम के लोग बढ़ते हैं उभरते हैं और जिस कौम के लोग सोते हैं गे जिम्मेदार होते हैं उनका मौत वक्त से पहले हो जाता है मैं वादा करती हूँ अपने मुल्क से अपने मुल्क के जमीन से अपने मुल्क के हर एक बंदे से कि जब तक इस मुल्क में खुशहाली अमन व सुकून की सांसें नहीं लेंगे तब तक चैन की सांसें नहीं लेंगे Being the Prime Minister, I do acknowledge the fact that there has some loopholes in our governance. But still, then we reassure the nation we have been and we will be working for the development of the country as much as possible. And we all will be witness of a beautiful, peaceful and above all progress nation. Dil badal sakte hai, just baad badal sakte hai. मुल्क के फिकर वो ख्यालात बदल सकते हैं, दोन मौजूद के दिन वो रात बदल सकते हैं, तुम बदल जाओ यारों तो हालात बदल सकते हैं। थैंक यू।
bills of consideration. Now the House will take up consideration of the police force bill 2022 minister please. I beg to move the bill, the police force bill 2022. The act of consolidate and amend the law relating to the establishment, regulation, powers and duties of the police force and for matters connected. The very foundation of our country is based on the rules of law. All the three organs of governance, law is held to be the most superior as most powerful. While the judiciary acts as a watchdog of the rule of the law, it is the police force which is the guardian of law and order in society. Without the police, nothing can withstand the chaos in a diverse nation like a past. Since the independence, our police force has largely remained based on traditional methods for crime prevention and detention. India is now no longer a legacy of the British colonial rule, and but an emerging superpower that wishes to enlist itself in the UNSC by the year 2025. Ma'am, in order to cope up with the 21st century challenges present in our nation, there is an urgent, emergent, and unprecedented need to reorganize the police force of our nation and make it more professional, service-oriented, and independent to external influences and accountable law. Ma'am, the main objection of this bill is to modify and amend the law relating to the establishment, regulations, and powers and duties of the police service in our country. As I mentioned earlier, there is an immediate need to modernize the police, police and our government pushes the initiatives by modernizing the police station itself. Also, proper arrangement for journalists has been made and the law Lockups are shall be upgraded to minimum human condition. In addition to the above mentioned provisions, every police station shall accommodate a separate cell for legal aid, women's cell, and state custody for juvenile, including separate cyber crime cell. All these facilities shall be verified by the chairpersons and members of the state human rights commission on a periodical basis. The bill also mandates that during the training and capability days of the human personnel, personnel of the police force, subjects such as human rights and cyber forensic shall be made compulsory. Please, the House maintain silence. And a failure to pass such courses shall lead to disciplinary action, which includes stoppage on promotion, demotion, and in extreme cases, termination from their service. The most striking feature of this bill is the constitution of all India complaints authority shall examine inquire and educate anticipate into complaints of misconducts and malpractice against the police force. Ma'am, it has been it has never been the good law. All the makers which have protected the sanctity of the governmental institution, but the effective and honest information of law that has always made the difference. It is not the judge sitting in the courtroom, nor the bureaucrats who who rushes to the court or to coordinate the public law. In order and in full, it is the ordinary constable wearing khaki and swinging a bamboo stick who represents all of these organs as one man army. And I hope this bill will bring initiating the much awaited changes needed in this tree in one representation of us. That will be all. Thank you, ma'am, and respected members. believe in the fact that the police force of our country is in a dire need to be reformed. And therefore, we welcome the bill wholeheartedly and through it, it will raise the standards of our police service and again to that, the developing of our nation. With these words, I now know that the police force bill of 2022 will be taken into consideration. Motion moved. That the bill relating to the establishment, regulation, powers and duties of the police service and for that matters, connected there with and incidental there to be taken into consideration. Mr. Hamamu, please enlighten the House with your views. Honorable Speaker, ma'am, police is one of the directed organs of the executive, which holds a provincial role in maintaining law and order in society. And for that matter, there should be 
partiality and the function of the police department. The legislature that this government has to come up in connection with police, reforms and must change it remains toothless and has a large scope of mismanage. Some of the provisions are in fact for contrary to the constitution of it. On the speaker, it seems that this bill has more in it for the government than for common people. It gives government power to interfere in police proceedings in an unconstitutional way. It is a mockery of our democracy that the government has no knowledge of our constitution. Coming up with such a frequent legislation is just unacceptable. This legislation is a fraud on the constitution itself. This bill hides more than its reveals. Opposition frequently opposes this bill and demands amendment to some provisions so as the to similarize this bill with the Constitution of India and public interest. Until our demand for amendment are not met, we won't let this bill to be passed. Honorable Minister of Home Affairs, please. It is indeed a learning experience for me to listen to the vibrant inputs of all the members of this house, the supporters as well as the critics. The first issue that I would clarify upon is that the pay of pay rates of police personnel, as pointed out by Sri Howlander, as mentioned in his previous speech, the honourable opposition member is forgetting about the two subsequent pay commission that stands implemented as of today. The police personnel along with the government employees, have been provided a multi voter raise on basic pay, along with other immunities such as DA, TA, and HRA. In his address to this August gathering, Sri Howard Road also vehemently criticized many provisions of this bill on the pretext of non inclusion of judicial authority in section 101 and 107. Is the respected opposition member forgetting the fact the judiciary in our country is already overburdened with almost four more cases still pending. The Honorable Opposition Member also raised the contention regarding Section 120, which expressly prohibits the filing of cases after six months. This, I again believe, is a step to ensure judicial awakening among the masses. An event which has occurred two or three years ago should not bother the efficient functioning of the police force. And if such thing is allowed, then we should stop complaining about the overburdening of the police department or delaying investigation and disposing of cases. I only request the House to kindly consider the fact that our country is the only country among the developing nations across the world which has been able to send an expedition to Mars. And yet, when we look down, the protection of our society and the intellect and image is of a man with a stick and a shield made out of bamboo. This bill is freedom from the colonial aspect. It is the first step that we, as a protectors and makers of law, have to make, have to take if we want to succeed in a nation in times to come. It is a humble request to everyone present in the house to strengthen the police force of our country by assigning his or her access to this bill. I request the House to pass the bill. The question is that the bill to consolidate and amend the law relating to the establishment, regulations, powers, and duties of the police service, and for that matters, connected therewith and incidental, there to be taken into consideration. Those who are in favor will say yes, and those who are against will say no. Yes. I think the yeas have it, the yeas have it, the yeas have it. The motion is adopted. The bill stands withdrawn. The House is adjourned to meet at 11 a.m. tomorrow.